All right, what is up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. This is Main the Outspoken, and once again, we are uh, playing the pirate survival game Atlas. And the developers, Grape Shot, have just recently announced that there is going to be a patch coming. Uh, today is March 9th, 2022, and based on their Discord, uh, it looks like the patch is coming March 10th, 2022, at 7 p.m. Pacific time. So again, the next patch coming for the game of Atlas uh, is coming March 10th, 7 p.m. Pacific time, tentatively. Of course, always check their uh, official Discord or playatlas.com for the most up-to-date information. Again, I'm just a player of the game. I don't work for Grape Shot or anything like that, so you know everything is always subject to change. But I thought I would make a quick video here today and just kind of talk about the patch notes that they have released and see what is going to be changed in our beloved game of Atlas. If you are new to the channel, I hope you'll become a subscriber as I try to regularly make content about gaming. And I also stream on Twitch as well, so you can check me out there. Alright, so I'm going to pull up the patch notes here on my phone so we can take a look at these together. Again, if you want to read these yourself, uh, just head over to playatlas.com and you can check these out. So let's start right at the top here. So again, the patch coming Thursday, March 10th at uh, 7 p.m. Pacific time. It says they're adding new content with this patch. They're adding a new modular ship. It's going to be called the Pegasus. And it says the new modular ship will be focused on transporting players' tames. It's a five-length ship built in the advanced shipyard once players have found blueprints for it. So this will be another one of those modular ships that does require a blueprint to create. And it says uh, it can have six tame railings that can store five tames each for a total of 30 tames. So again, this ship is going to be called the Pegasus. And apparently it can somehow store and transport up to 30 tames, which is pretty cool. Uh, the resources, 2,500 wood, 2,000 thatch, 2,000 fiber, and 20 metal. So a new modular ship coming to Atlas, and it's called the Pegasus. And apparently it's for transporting your tames. Uh, it says they have new modular ship user interface. They've added a popularly voted on request in the game in the form of additional UI for captains to know where leaks and damage is on their modular ships. That's pretty cool because I know it is difficult as of the way it is right now anyway to know truly where your boat is the most damage and leaking. You kind of just walk up to all those modular tiles and they all just kind of look the same as of right now. Uh, it says there will be three stages of durability. Green will mean the durability is good. Yellow means the durability is moderate. And red, of course, durability is poor. So starting after the patch, if you have a modular ship, you'll now be able to kind of tell which parts of the ship are damaged. It says if the portion of the ship is flashing, that means the area has a leak, and they will look to make this UI element colorblind friendly in the future. So that's cool. Um, it says they have a map menu UI visual remap, uh, revamp. The Atlas tab map uh, UI has been revamped visually for an easier navigation of the regions. Instead of having drop-down tabs of the regions on the left, all regions will be now available on the overworld map. So that's kind of cool, because so like if you look at your Atlas map on official, I'm not on an official server here, so um, I can't exactly show you, but normally when you look at your map in your inventory off to the left, there'll be all the little tabs for all the different regions. So I am guess they're saying now it's just going to be one big map, so you won't have to go through all those little tabs, which will hopefully make it a little easier. It was always a real pain when you would go to look at your map and it would be like defaulted on Rookie Cove or defaulted on a you know, another region that you weren't even in. So hopefully that fix will be good. Uh, it says there now are open water servers. There's a new way to traverse through the Atlas regions besides portals. There are now intermediate open water servers that connect regions to one another. There are no islands to be found there, just open seas and the treasure and dangers that come along with it. So that's kind of cool. They're going to make it so when you sail, like, say, out of central waters, you'll actually go through, like, an intermediate zone um, that will just be 
pure ocean, no islands, and then you'll come out uh, on the other side in another region. So that's kind of neat. Um, you know, maybe they'll add more ships of the damned or something into those regions, or, you know, maybe players will utilize those open waters for ship fights. I know a lot of players tend to just go to the Golden Age as of right now, but maybe with this uh, these open water servers, it'll kind of be like the Kraken server, where people do the Kraken Bowl every season, you know? Um, so yeah, maybe these uh, new open water areas will make it uh, just a little different anyway. Um, then it, do it shows where they're going to be, basically all around like central waters, northern sea, and all of that. So we'll kind of have to see how that works out. It says, the industrial path of wonders is slowly making its way into Atlas. Transient and static nodes for this path can be found and harvested exclusively within the Uncharted Sea region. So that was a new lawless region that they recently added into the game. There's no claim towers there as far as I know. I think it's just like true old school lawless. Um, and so they're saying they're adding more nodes into the game. Um, it says, industrial wonder content... Um, so there's going to be new power nodes and transient nodes, it says. Uh, the transient node, geothermal vents. This transient node is similar to the Army of the Damned ones in that they have a time limit of one week before they deplete, despawn, and respawn at a different location. But they may spawn more inland. Players will need to craft the new ore miner structure in order to harvest the resource of these nodes. So I guess that's going to be similar to, to the Gravedigger. Um, if you've used a grave digger before in Atlas, you know that you'll find these like little poofs of green smoke on your island with like little hornets or fireflies or whatever. And th that's the area where you put your grave digger and it will harvest cursed bone. But of course, every week that spot moves to somewhere else. So I guess this is going to be similar and they're going to be called geothermal vents. So that's kind of cool. Uh, says these transient nodes produce a new resource type of coal called brimstone. Through the fire and brimstone, right? So that's kind of cool. Uh, says they're going to be two variants of industrial static nodes as well. There will be lava vents and sulfur pits. So that's kind of cool. There's no need to create a harvesting structure for either of these as, fa as pathfinders, pathfinders excuse me, who've traveled here have built them already. Oh, but they seem to have perished. So apparently there's going to be some kind of harvesting structure already on these nodes, and I guess that maybe they're like a free-for-all thing that anyone can just walk up to them and, and pull stuff out of, so that's kind of cool. The lava vents produce a new metal. I don't even want to try to pronounce that. Or, or a callum, or something like that. Um, so there's a new type of metal being introduced into the game. Uh, the sulfur pits will produce a new type of coal, which is pure sulfur. And it says both of these resources are needed to craft the new industrial structures and gear now and in the future. So that's kind of cool. So they're adding more stuff going forward that's going to require these new resources. Kind of like when they added the cursed bone and the cursed wood. Um, lava static nodes will now allow the players to build the industrial smithy. Okay, so we're going to have a new type of uh, smithy. The Sulfur Pit Static Nodes will get new crafting recipes in the future. Well, that's cool. Got some cool uh, lights going on here behind me. <laughs> Looks pretty neat. All right, let's continue on here with the patch notes. Uh, this says there's new craftable items. The Ore Miner, which we mentioned before, uh, which will harvest those new transient nodes. It says it will be unlocked under the Metallurgy skill. And crafted in the smithy. Uh, there will be a new smithy, as we mentioned, the industrial smithy um, that will be allowed, that will be used to make the industrial wonders. Oh, okay, we're going to get a new rifle into the game. It says it's going to be called the industrial rifle. It's a rifle variant unique to this path that deals bleed damage in addition to regular damage. So that's pretty cool. So it's a new rifle that actually has an additional bleed damage to it, which is, that's kind of interesting. Um, it says it will be crafted in the smithy under Secrets of the Rifle. Uh, it looks like it takes 65 ingots, and it, you have to have that new type of metal that they're introducing, and the pure sulfur. Okay, so this will be a new type of rifle. It's called the Industrial Rifle, and you have to have those new resources in order to craft it. 
Uh, it says they're also introducing an industrialized Hydra pistol as well. It's a pistol variant unique to this path that deals additional bleed damage as well. So that's pretty neat. So they're adding a new rifle and a new Hydra pistol into the game of Atlas. And they have bleed damage. So that'll be interesting. Uh, Sulfurous Mini, a new type of ammo type that is fired out of the industrial rifle and pistol. Okay, so we've got new ammo as well that requires the new type of metal and that pure sulfur. So if you want to craft these new weapons, you're going to have to have that pure sulfur and that new metal type. Uh, it says there's some changes to the free ports. Tortuga Freeport Islands have been updated with new visuals. Uh, new holiday content is coming, it says. We're going to get St. Paddy's Day holiday items. A pot of gold has been added to the holiday vendor. And green ale has been added to the holiday vendor as well. So we're going to get to make green beer for St. Patrick's Day, apparently. Uh, let's see. There's a new skill in the game. Pirate's Resilience. It says Pirate's Resilience will be a passive buff game when any Pathfinder achieves the Veteran Explorer quest. This buff will cause incoming torpor damage to be reduced by 50%. Wow. Okay, so that's a lot. So I guess now going forward when you complete the Veteran's Explorer quest, you can earn a passive uh, buff called Pirate's Resilience and it will reduce your torpor damage by 50%. That's a lot. Wow. Okay. So... Anybody who's relying on, like, the shield bash or the mace to knock people out, it's going to be 50% harder to do that now. <laughs> All right, so now we're getting into the bug fixes part of the patch notes. All right, so it says they fixed instances where vendor NPC purchasable items highlights were not working correctly. They fixed instances where all the monumental study structures were missing collision. I'm not sure what that means. Uh, fixed instances where the market trade system is not locating the current trade connections. So some fixes to the warehouse system. Uh, they fixed instances of circular slice not functioning when a shield is equipped. Fixed instances where available spawn servers would not reflect the player's current server. Fixed instances where the weight stat on the turtle ship would revert to the default value after logging off. Okay, so there's a fix to a modular ship. Uh, they fixed instances where claim points were inaccurate, fixed where sea fort towers and walls could be demolished. They fixed where sail snap points would change when a ship was released. Fixed instances where duplicate sub was created in the ding when the dinghy dock was full. They fixed when small sails could be placed very close to each other. So that's good because I know I've seen, I mean, I've even seen like cogs have like three or four sails on them. And I don't know if that was intended um, but I'm hoping that will be fixed. Uh, fixed instances or holiday structures could be placed in free ports. Uh, I did see a picture where someone had apparently blocked the vendor with a bunch of those teddy bears. <laughs> so hopefully that's fixed now. Um, fixed instances where unnatural fog was not functioning. Uh, fixed the misspelled text of the burial mound framework. Fixed instances where ship autopilot does not function properly. Uh, fixed where ships of the dam followed players across grids. So I guess ships of the dam won't follow you across the grid anymore. Fixed instances where there was an overlapping gun port on the turtle ship. Fixed instances where default sails on the cog spawned in incorrect locations. Fixed instances where the sextant map would crash the client in Blackwood. Uh, fixed instances where modular ship could uh, have more sails than intended. Okay, so that's a big one because a lot of people had been complaining, you know, that certain modular ships were just way too good. Um, you could put too many sails on them and they would go way too fast. So hopefully they'll be a little bit more balanced now. Uh, they fixed uh, where modular ships could exceed their intended max speed. So there we go. So I know, I think it was like the mortar ship and a couple others that were just way, way too fast. The tramp freighter. Um, I mean, it's great that they're fast, but it just seems a little unnatural for what the ship is intended to be like you wouldn't think that a big cargo freight boat is going to go faster than a six sail galleon right so hopefully that's fixed now uh they fix instances where the user interface text would overlap fixed where pve claim tower decay would affect around surrounding structures um fixed instances of islands having visual inconsistencies uh 
They fixed it where the discovery zones of power stones were in rookie cove grids. That's kind of weird. Okay, here we go. So for you Xbox players, I know that the game of Atlas has been having a lot of problems with Xbox. Um, specifically the Series S, especially. I guess the Series S, for whatever reason, is just... They're having a really hard time programming for that, and it still has some issues. So it does say Xbox Series S still has some crashes when loading a large number of structures. Um, and let's see here. And they, But it does say that they have fixed instances of memory leaks. And supposedly that was the big reason why Xbox players were crashing all the time, whether either fast traveling or just going through a grid line. Uh, I know myself, I play on a Series X, and I was experiencing a ton of game crashes on official. Um, pretty much any time I would fast travel to a bed outside of the region I was currently in, the game would just dashboard, and you'd have to reload in. It'd be like this five-minute process every time, so it was getting pretty annoying. So I hope that that's fixed. It says, fixed instances of textures loading and unloading incorrectly. Fixed instances where level of detail was not being changed correctly. And it says this is still a work in progress, additional fixes, and optimization coming in future. Now, if you play on unofficial, like right now I'm on an unofficial server, and the detail of the graphics and stuff are very good on here, in my opinion. Um, you know, the textures are all smooth, it all looks very crisp and detailed. Like if you walk up to a tame, you know, you can see every little hair, you can see the details of their eyes. You know, like if you, I zoom in on my character, you can like see his the pupils of his eyes and everything, right? If you go on official right now, though, everything looks kind of blurry. Everything looks kind of distorted. Um, and so they're saying that they are fixing that with this patch. So pretty much I'm assuming that the graphics are just going to look like this, like how they look on unofficial. But now it will look that way on the official PvP and PvE servers. Uh, let's see here. So, and then it just lists off a bunch of known issues. I won't really get into those because hopefully those will be fixed relatively soon. Um, it does say that they've made a few changes. Uh, so like large stone walls now, it says they've increased the health to 100,000. So that's interesting. Uh, I know they had mentioned that they wanted to do more harbor defense structures. So maybe this is the beginning of that. They want the large walls to be a little better, uh, as of right now, they're not that great. I think I don't know the exact number, but I think they might only have like 20,000 health right now, something like that. And so now they're upping it to 100,000 for a, a basic common large wall. And the same with the large stone foundation. It says they're increasing that to 120,000 health. I'm not sure what it currently has, but 120,000 health for the large stone foundation. Uh, it says that meat has been added to the list of resources that players can put in the crew silo. So that's kind of cool. So, if, you know, if you're trying to stockpile berries and vegetables and food, you, you can actually just put it all right in the silo now, which is kind of cool. Uh, it says stage progression required resources for the Great Temple has been modified to use only blocks and bundles instead of large quantity of base resources. Okay, so that's kind of neat. So they did introduce... Uh, some kind of a, 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 you know, a structure that takes large amounts of resources and then bundles them into like a stack of, I think, 10,000. Uh, so it makes it easier to move around and, and whatnot. So you're not pulling out just thousands and thousands of resources. You can just pull out one stack. And so they're saying that the temple, the great temple, now will just use those blocks of resources. Uh, progression tables can no longer be destroyed. And... Uh, it says colors for the quality of items has been shifted to be more readable. Uh, I hope that they fixed the fine quality blueprints. I know when you look at a fine blueprint right now, it basically looks like it's common. Uh, it doesn't have that green coloring on it like it used to have. It just kind of looks gray and the text is in black. Uh, so hopefully they've fixed that so that you can actually tell the difference between a common and a fine blueprint. And let's see, what else we got here? Modular ship sinking time has been slowed by 50%. Okay, so that's a big one. So it's interesting that they only made that change to the modular ships and not the legacy ships. I mean, it, it does definitely seem like they're trying really, really hard to make the modular ships a lot better than the old legacy ships, which is kind of disappointing to me. It's just my opinion. Uh, but... Yeah, it is what it is, I guess. So, modular ships now will sink 50% slower. 
It says the mortar and the harrier ship can now only fire if they're going under five knots. So that's an interesting change because I know, like I had mentioned before, that a lot of people were complaining that those ships were just way too fast. Like the, mo the uh, mortar ship, the harrier ship. I know it was like the broadsider, the tramp freighter. All of those ships were just crazy fast. And maybe they're supposed to be eventually. I don't know. Uh, but it just seemed like they were way, way too fast for what their intent was. So I guess they're not going to be able to shoot cannons now if they're traveling that fast. They'll have to pretty much go under five knots. So those won't make those as good anymore. Modular ship speeds have been adjusted to be more in line with the legacy ships. Okay, so there it is. So hopefully that's just a broad change right there that all of the modular ships now will be a little slow. I don't want... See, the thing is, I don't want them to be slower, necessarily. I just want everything to kind of be equal. You know, if I've got a six-speed sail large galleon, that should be able to go fast, right? It's a big, huge boat with a bunch of sails. Yeah, I get it that the little ships should go fast, too, but sometimes they're just, like, twice or three times as fast as a as the other legacy ships. So I'm hoping that this change will kind of balance everything out. And, you know, just kind of make things a little more even. Uh, it says the Industrial Sea Fort Buff Tower has it had its name changed to the Industrial Tower now. And uh, LODs have been adjusted, updated, and created for several assets. I'm not sure what that means. But anyway, so those are the patch notes. Uh, again, apparently the update is potentially coming tomorrow on Thursday, March 10th. 7 p.m. Pacific time is it was supposed to actually be today March 9th uh, but there was an announcement made that the the patch is being pushed out to Thursday March 10th 7 p.m. Pacific time again as always don't hold me to that it's tentative to change at any time if you want to stay up to date with the most recent uh, news with Atlas Make sure you uh, join their official Discord server and also follow them on playatlas.com. That's where they post all of their patch notes and announcements and videos and things like that. They did release a video the other day kind of showing their roadmap of 2022, and I did a video on that if you want to check that out. So overall, it looks like the Grapeshot developers uh, have a plan here going forward, and they're going to start to implement some of these changes as recent as tomorrow. And the biggest thing I'm looking forward to is the changes for Xbox. I really hope that we'll get some, you know, more stability uh, with the connection issues and things like that, especially on the official servers. I know that the unofficial servers seem to be having some problems lately. Um, I'm not sure if that's related to Natrado or just the game itself. I don't know. So hopefully some of these issues will be fixed and addressed. And we can continue to play our beloved Atlas. Let me know what you think about the patch notes in the comments section below. Is, is there anything that you're excited to see? Is there anything you're disappointed about? Things that you wish had been in there that doesn't seem to be in there maybe it's coming in the next patch but let me know what you think in the comments section as always i hope you'll become a subscriber to the channel for future updates and future videos thanks for watching everybody this is main the outspoken and safe sailing out there